and welcome back, how are you? Today, we're going to look at making a knurling tool. It looks like a little love like that, doesn't it? It might save that for on Valentine's Day. Uh, these are absolutely bobbins. I've read up on them, and when you use these against the rotating workpiece, they can force the head bearings to wear uh, on your lathe. And that's never a good thing, especially when you've got an old crusty lathe to start with. So, I need to make one of the clamping types. So, that is absolutely no use whatsoever. But you know me, I don't like doing things by halves. So a few weeks ago, I managed to purchase a couple pieces of brass. But don't worry, I didn't spend a lot of money on them. It cost me about eight pounds, because nobody else wanted them. I mean, what else can you do with like a five inch, by half inch blank of brass? So I managed to get a couple of them. And this is going to be the body of the knurler. So a couple of them. Some big pieces of steel, they need cutting down and doing a bit of fanciness with. We go like that. You can see it now, can't you? I can see it. Oh, everybody else can see it. That. And another one. Mmm, shiny. It'll be when I finish with it. Voila. And a couple of holes through there. And maybe like a bar through there to tighten it up. Are we nearly there? A couple of knurling wheels, but these look a bit lost at the moment. But you can see the general idea, can't you? It's just kicking a bucket. I'm not going to kick the bucket yet, I just kicked a bucket. That's the basis of my big ass knurler. So I'll get on with that. I'll just offer a piece up now on the lathe to show you it doesn't look quite that bad actually on a tool post. Let's go over here. Now then, he says, that doesn't look out to it a place, does it? You can get away with things like with a big lathe. Yeah, I think I'll get away with that. And I like the, le the retro look as well. Let's get on with it. <sighs> right. Yes. I've cleaned that edge up on the back edge, everything's fine, but I still need to do this edge. It's got like a rough pitted mill finish. It must be they rolled the bar in the mill, I'm guessing. Uh, so, but unfortunately, as you can see, it's held in by the four jar chuck. I'm going to drill a hole all the way through so I can bolt on this mandrel, thus putting this into the three jar chuck then freeing up that edge to clean up. That's my idea anyway. I use that for something else, so it should work. Let's get on with it. It's raining at the moment, can you hear it? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. There's nothing more satisfying than a bit of laving on a Thursday night while it's raining outside. Yep, it's official, it's raining. Anyway, that's Bolton. On a Thursday night. Not very exciting, is it? Let's get back to it later. So anyway, let's get this big daft thing off. I'm not over keen on it. And the sooner I get it off, the better. I 
I have to walk around the camera for this one. Bear with me. There we go. That's what the board's for, to protect the bed. Right, let's dispense with that thing and get the three jar on. I've got to get these two work pieces the exact same diameter so I can put them in the milling clamp to do some stack drilling, which I'm going to do in a minute. So I've decided to put both together. I'll just give it one quick pass so they're absolutely bang on. Bang tidy! Yep, looks like one piece now, you can't see the joint. Magic! Over to the milling machine. <sighs> drilling it's three quarters drilling this project that big old though you can see I've also I've, I've used to put the two pieces of metal back together again same principle stack drill drill through both pieces should line up that's the idea anyway uh, big holes for the pivot point small holes for the wheel and I'll cut that off with the metal chop saw clean that up with a ball mill and there's the basic shape of the arms talk about stack drilling uh, that's finished off now. You see the holes don't go all the way through, the blind holes, hopefully. When the whole thing gets goes together, you won't see any fixings on this side. That's the whole idea. But it depends 
that's for an M10 bolt, it depends if I can get enough thread there, hopefully I can, otherwise I'll have to drill through the old lot and we'll have to have some bolts on that side anyway. But hopefully we won't. So it's looking good so far. So I'll get on with some more boring machining and we'll pick it up in a minute or so. I'm just doing a little bit of reaming at the moment, just to get the holes nice and round. I've set the drill mill at 200 RPM and it's going through effortlessly. It is just taking a very, very slight bit off. But he's doing the job. There we go, it's free. So that just cleans up the hole. I like that. I like that a lot. have a rotary table, I can't afford one at the moment, so I have to go back to basics which consists of roughly cutting with a chop saw and then grinding off round and then a bit of uh, sanding and a bit of polishing should get the desired shape I want. And then Blue Peter style is one I made earlier, and you can see the results aren't bad are they? Not bad at all. Just a bit of elbow grease, we haven't got the tools to do the job. Right, next stage. So. A slot is then milled out to take the knurling wheel. to bolt the knurling wheels to the, to the arms. Well, as you can see, I can't find a suitable bolt. That's too slack, that's an M6, that's an M8. I can't get anything to fit in just how I want. So at least one option, that's the machine one up. As I'm doing here. I don't like that much hanging at the truck when it's that thin, so I'm taking a very, very light cut off. These kneeling wheels are now fit as snug as a bug in a rug. Yes. Perfect. Not much slack at all. Happy days. Well, I think that's enough milling and drilling for anybody. So off camera, I finished all the pieces up and I've got to say the whole project took me over 10 hours so it wasn't worth filming. As you can imagine. Let's see what we've got. Well, it certainly looks interesting anyway. What have we got? What have we got? Let's have a look. Uh, these pins. Biggie smalls I call them, because you've got a small, then a bigger midsection. And that's to stop it falling all the way through the plate. Obviously it stops at the, at the big section. That's that. 
Now then, to control these arms, we need a control mechanism. Well, voila, one control mechanism. Uh, everything's a quite a tidy fit. Everything's a press fit. There's a bit of movement though, but you can't pull it out. So I spent a bit of time on it. And that's an M10 thread. I've got to fancy this up yet, I don't know yet. That slides into that groove I just milled out and it's held in place with this pin. Again a biggie small. That pin goes through there. And then we and then when I've got this yoke on there, it goes there. And with the pin in, to wind the arms up and up and down. That's just a rough show that into anyway you get the idea with that. The rest is spacer, 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 spacer. Oh, I made it I've cut that all up there as well, didn't I? That all's in one place, but we don't mind about that, does it? Well like, you don't tell anybody, I won't tell anybody. These things happen, don't they? So you got all that. Obviously that goes on top there, as you have a control arm. The whole thing is then encased with the other side, which is a real bugger to line up. Something like that, and then the whole lot is also held together with this large brass bolt I made. And then it's a chuck that bolt, and some of the screws are made for the other wheels. I've just gone for the old uh, slotted look, like an old cheese head, like the retro 1930s look, which I quite like that really. Uh, that's them. So, you get the general gist of it. So, next video, I'll bolt it together and we'll give it a go, and hopefully, it'll work. There you go, one big ass nailer, hopefully. Thanks for viewing and come back for part two.